Hello everyone and welcome to another video um, where this time I'm gonna talk about capture the flag in planet side 2. Um, listen I've kind of been quite quiet on this subject um, even kind of in private conversations when people ask me oh hey what do you think of capture the flag etc etc uh, you know what kind of feedback would you provide um, and I really kind of wanted to give it a, a, a small while just for my initial kind of reaction to, to kind of die, die down and, and such. And kind of come up with it with a bit more of a, um, I suppose, analytical view. Um, and so that's what we'll, that's what I'm going to be doing. In the seven um, bases here on Amrish for Capture the Flag, we're going to talk about each one. Um, Split Peak Pass will be the longest one. Um, where I'm going to talk about concepts and um, how these concepts then apply to the other um, eight base, uh, the other six bases. Um, to reinforce the points that I'm going to make, we'll also take a quick trip to uh, uh, SMR later on to look at um, n perhaps not all eight of the bases, uh, CTF bases there, um, but certainly uh, you know a few of them, and we're going to discuss them um, as well as. You know, are they an improvement on the bases, you know, which they had already, which they basically kind of replaced the traditional system. Um, but also, you know, whether or not this kind of system works. In order to do that, we are going to have to be discussing kind of what the bases were beforehand. Uh, thankfully, I have a pretty good memory and I remember pretty much, you know, the, what the base layouts were before. Um, so no need for any fancy editing. Uh, which would be my downfall. So, we're going to talk about Split Peak Pass. It's a really important base um, on the you know, east side of Amrish. It really helps control this enough uh, uh, zealous western lane. Um, it kind of protects the somewhat vulnerable west air dock, um, the Araxicum substation lane, and East Hill. So, it's got three lattice links. It's quite an important base. It used to be, not a three-pointer, but a four-pointer. Um, you had a point underground here at the Diamond's Waypoint, one at Spades, you had the A point at Hearts, and then I think it was the C point at Clubs, the B point at Spades, and the D point at Diamonds. Um, and it was a really tough base to take, you know, either you'd have to come in with, you know, a, you know, a ghost cap it almost on a 1 to 12, or, you know, you need a, a, a lot of people, right? Um, so it's quite a difficult base to take back then, and in my opinion, it's even more difficult now. To understand why, or to help us understand why, let's talk about Capture the Flag. The only rele uh, relevant bit that I want to mention here, that we need, that we must need to know, is that when we are trying to capture the flag, right... Essentially, the, the, important, the important thing is taking the, the conduit right back to, um, uh, I forget what it's called, I think maybe the repo. Um, but essentially, <clears throat> the important thing is taking the flag from here up to the uh, relevant point. Okay? Uh, yeah, yeah, the repo. So, um, essentially, that's what you need to do. However... Here's the issue. So first of all, you need to capture 12 flags, which is okay. It's that that doesn't sound like a lot, but compared to other bases, West Pass is nine, Wokook is six, Shroud is uh, Skyway is six. Um, you know, it's it's a fair it's a fair amount. The big issue here is the design of the base. Okay, and not. In terms of infantry gameplay, in terms of infantry gameplay, you know, if we're looking at a 2D linear perspective, let's say we have a Sunder at Squad Waypoint, and of course we have the Spawn at Diamonds Waypoint. Well, from a linear perspective, okay, uh, you know, we're using the teleporter to get to C, uh, we can use the main spawn room to get to B, and we can use the uh, the jump pads, I guess, I'll draw like this, to get to A. You know? And that's how, you know, in the, in the 2D linear approach, 
right? These are kind of the, you know, what I call key infantry routes. Again, these that's more, more detail than you even need to know. But essentially they go, you know, for from from these kind of linear points. Now, of course, you can have more Sunderer spots. But these linear points, right, which then meet at the conduits. Okay. So, of course, like I mentioned, right, you can have more Sunderer spots. Uh, just some examples of where you can put Sunderers. Right, in these towers, of course, you can put them. You can put one here at the old B point as well, right? So there's plenty of places to put Sunders, okay? But from a linear 2D perspective, right, this is what we have to look at. Now, what's really important here, okay, are, are timings, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10 very fast seconds okay to get to, to get to the b point here so what does that mean now um for the attackers well we look at the attackers you know let's say we they they're coming from the closest su possible sunder spot which is somewhere around here well they have to go 135 meters up not just not just across which we had to from the spawn but also up so already right they are fighting a literal uphill battle to get to this uh, to this B area. So in terms of timings, right, the defenders here have a massive advantage, right? Because again, we, we leave the spawn room, you know, it's a, that's what, a, a 10 second run. We take the jump pads, we're already onto A point. It's really quick to defend, okay? Now there's some exceptions, uh, you know, to these kind of, uh, bases, the traverse being an obvious one, um, but for split, but for this base specifically, right? It, it, this is a massive problem. Okay, just how quickly the defenders can actually get to these uh, conduits. So let's then talk about how I defend CTF bases, and indeed I had to during the Ultimate Empire Showdown. Uh, where I was went a gaming's assistant force commander, and really it was quite simple. We dropped on this building at the traverse, which is where the repo is stored. We uh, I think killed a flag carrier, but we uh, and, and we also flipped the uh, repo, and instantly all the progress they had made was reset. And we instantly backcapped them at Fire Amp Station. Instantly backcapped them. Uh, there was already a, a, a VS force at Snowshears, so that's why they, uh, and, and Matheson's was was also getting capped. So, you know, so they got instantly backcapped, which is really bad. Okay, really bad, because if you can instantly backcap someone um, once they had made you know, relative gains on a base, just like instantly, you know, it, 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 it's, it's really concerning. Now, I am told that, um, you know, I'm not sure if this is true or not. Um, uh, I, I did look over the patch notes, but I couldn't really see where this was mentioned. But apparently, um, you know, that, that is going to, that particular feature um, or game mechanic, it's going to get looked at, and I hope it does because there's no way that sh you know that should be able to happen, okay? Because you can't defend both the flag carrier and the conduit, sorry, the repo, uh, without um, but basically just overpop, right? You, you you would need overpop for that, and you know at bases such as uh, Split Peak Pass, the Bastion, Crux Headquarters, West Pass Watchtower. Um, you already need overpop for these bases, so you know to add even and and a require requirement almost for more overpop is really bad. However, although that might sound like a, a cardinal sin and something which would be my main concern with capture the flag, it actually isn't. Let's revisit this drawing here, this diagram. And you may be thinking, oh, Dubnus, why do we need to talk about about how, how kind of battle flow works and 
so on and so forth. Well, it's quite simple, right? With this system, um, there's plenty of time for an unorganized force versus an organized force. So in, in, in this example, right, the unorganized force are the defenders. The organized force are the attackers. There's plenty of time for the unorganized force to actually defend the base. Then, once you consider the fact of the aforementioned mechanic where you can instantly undo people's progress, especially on the one point uh, bases, you, you kind of get the feeling that a defender, you know, a, people who are defending CTF bases have a massive advantage. Well, we also have to consider that bases are not two-dimensional and that gameplay in planet side 2 is not two-dimensional so this base layout would be okay-ish in a game like I don't know just your bog standard first person shooter with no combined arms because the issue is here air vehicles and vehicles okay I as a platoon leader, can galaxy drop any of these points with either one squad, two squad, three squads, or four, and pretty much turn the tide of the battle instantly, right? And there's no time, there's no timer mechanic to allow the attackers, you know, because I'm defending the base, to allow the attackers to actually utilize some of the time they've bought themselves by capturing time on the point but in this case flags to actually be able to say if i drop um you know squad waypoint here the old c point they've got no time to get over here and stop uh, and stop me right they would have to stay here already and then like i said right they would need more population to be able to go over to the B point and capture that conduit. So all of a sudden, we're, we, we're not only do we require a lot more population, but actually we need more spawns, which in a game where logistics is already quite... Um, well, pe people do their best. Right? People do do their best. Um, you know, it's just going to mean that the attackers are a massive disadvantage. And now I want you to consider other aspects of the game which happen quite often. For example, killing Sunderers, whether or not it's a ambusher a light assault with C4 and a rocket rifle killing the, killing a bus, um, or if it's, a, it's just just a random AP lightning, so on and so forth. Well, now, you know, we're adding the need for even more population, right? Because now we don't just need population to get, capture the, the, the conduit and defend the repo, but also to defend logistics. And then we add in the fourth and final point here of urgency, which actually comes down to the air. And it's a little, it's a little thing called air to ground. So... Whenever I see a CTF base being attacked on live, I kind of smile because I know that I can make some progression on my air to ground weapons. For example, let's say, to use the worst example on, on this particular base, squad waypoint here to B point. Okay? So. Let's say we're going to start off at squad waypoint. Okay. Now, you know, utilizing all the knowledge I have in the game, right, I might think, oh, maybe this jump pad will help me cross the road. And of course it doesn't. It takes us over to the old B point. When realizing that, right, when realizing this, a player will be like, oh, well, that's bloody useless. I need to go back the other way. So they go back the other way. And they're like, okay, well, I'll use the bridge. And thankfully, there's a little bit of cover. 
So, a bit more difficult to die to air the ground, just instead of having to take the option of going up the hill, which is uh, this squad waypoint here, right? This little bend, you'd have to go up a hill, um, uphill battle quite literally. You know, you've got a little bit of cover, um, and it's a bit, bit more of an even fight because, you know, there's cover either side of the bridge, so on and so forth. And then you've got, let's say, look at this, 30 metres or so, or just open ground to run across. You've got snipers on the spawn or uh, spawn room roof. Snipers perhaps on the air pad or even heavy assaults with LMGs. Uh, you know, you could have people head glitching here, protecting it. And then to make matters worse, when you're running back, right? Not only perhaps we get shot in the back, but we're running, we're running, we're running. We're you know somehow we haven't been shot in the back. It, you know, it's great news. People have thrown themselves behind me to stop me from dying. And now I've got a 90 meter dash to a building where I need to deposit it. Well, I'm getting air to grounded from here to here. Then I'm safe. And now I'm getting air to grounded again. And even if I go to the right here, I'm still going to be getting air to grounded. Now, don't forget I'm attacking this base, so I can't use the uh, uh, the AA turrets. Okay, without, you know, people hacking them. Um, you know, the, the best you could really do is, is, is to put up a flak nest almost in the hills, uh, but really you, you, you would need your own air force, but even if you have your own air force, then, you know, these uh, AA turrets are just going to drive them off, and again, enemy air to ground is just going to pick you apart. So, to recap the four main points here, right, in a 2D environment, this would be okay-ish. Except for the time for the defenders to um, the flags and also to the con conduits, uh, it, it benefits the defenders more than the attackers. The attackers need more population to defend both conduits and the flag. There's instant punishment rather than delayed uh, that you have with the timer if you lose the conduit. Um, sorry, the repo. Um, so you need more population there, you need more population to defend your logistics, and you also need more population to either deal with their air to ground, or you just get air to ground farmed. And that's basically how that works out, right? Those are the four main points that I want to be bringing up here, um, and they need to be addressed, because otherwise CTF will not work. Um, now, actually, while we're kind of, you know, around... Um, I'm just flying around. I want to bring up an old base, um, Subterranean Nana Analysis. It has a nickname Subterranean Grenade Analysis, which is quite funny. Um, but the reason I bring it up is because actually that would have been a really interesting base to see CCTF on because it removes quite a few of those um, variables which I've just mentioned. Anyway, we find ourselves at Crux headquarters. Um, if I remember correctly, uh, there was a point here at Squad Way. You had the B point here, and and actually that was a C point at at, at Spades, uh, which of course means the Squad Way I think was A. Uh, but regardless, okay, we have these kind of routes here again, right? So again, right? What did I mention? I mentioned you know air the ground is a, is an issue, right? Between here and here, vehicles are are issues between here and here. Um, Logistics are, you know, good sunderer spots are here. Um, I see sometimes people put sunderers at spades here underneath the bridge. They're so bad when people put sunderers there. It actually annoys me. Um, but, you know, you have the, the garage itself, right? Um, and then, you know, those are kind of your two main sunderer spots if we're looking at this, again, from that two-dimensional point of view. But let's have a look at for the def the defenders again are going to be in yellow. Um, a bit of a longer run to A than to B, but again, you know, it, let's be honest, it does favour the defenders. However, right, the attackers at least to get to the conduits this time, it's a little less. However, they are still beaten when they get uh, in t in terms of time to B, and they're still beaten in terms of getting of time to A. Um, a point which I haven't mentioned about this is that basically what it, what it means is naturally um, the defenders, because they get to the point, uh, the, the conduit before the 
uh, attackers in terms of more population, more reinforcements. That means they have local superiority in that area because they have higher sustain. And because they have higher sustain, um, they're able to control the area better, get that numerical advantage, um, which in turn just means either more skill is required for the attackers um, or they need uh, more population again. Right. So again, we have the same issues present here on to a lesser extent, granted, but still the same issues. And now we'll go to the Bastion. The Bastion is really interesting because it's a tower CTF base. Um, again, right, we find ourselves experiencing the same issues here at the Bastion. Um, the Bastion in its old form, right, um, had points at you had the, the uh, one in the tower, one one at diamonds, and one at uh, spades, right? Um, and in terms of Sunderer spots, okay, Squad Waypoint was a really good Sunderer if you could get it uh, set up. Um, again, you could have one at diamonds. Um, I think, if I remember correctly, one one around spades. Uh, you wouldn't want to put one here because it would die to, v to the AV turret here uh, and here. Uh, you could put one here, but without... Before CTF, that would have been a really bad Sunderer. Now, actually, um, looking at it, it's probably not too bad, except for the line of sight of those turrets. So, um, yeah, again, not great. So, we'll go with those Sunderer setups, right? Um, essentially, what it means is it's not too bad, right? Except for when you run back to the repos, again, you're dealing with air to ground. Okay. Um, and they've made some changes here. They used to be um, that used to go all the way up, and then there used to be uh, uh, they do, there wasn't a gravel if there was like a drop instead. But essentially, right, um, it's still got the same issues present. And we look at this B uh, conduit. There is no way anyone is getting into that uh, area without um, outskilling their opponent drastically um or having po um over pop to a drastic level okay just because of the nature of towers we you know i'm not going to spend time talking about how difficult towers are to take um you know that could be its whole a whole new video um and it's also something other people have done so no need to worry about that but really really we have to consider how this then affects the rest of the base it just makes everything so difficult. Uh, I would I would actually see... I would just prefer to not even bother attacking the Bastion. Um, I'd rather go through an amp station or, or the Biolab. I would prefer the old Bastion over this. The same with Crux Headquarters. Um, and the same as Split Peak Pass. And I think that's the important thing to note. I know we... Um, I, you know, I think that's the really important thing to note is that, look, although these three pointers, and we're going to look at uh, West Pass next, you know, although, you know, yes, they are important bases, right, with multiple lattice links, um, you know, they're kind of linchpins on the map, they're pop sinks, I understand, um, but a pop sink shouldn't be this difficult to take, at least not in the current uh, game state or, or of CTF um, in the wider game. And here, right for for west pass i mean this is impossible this is apps you've got one it we've got one point uh one one flag in the tower and one behind it how are you as an as an attacker getting that point without over pop this is impossible this is literally impossible okay um you could put a sunderer like on the road but i mean is that gonna is that really gonna survive the answer is no. <laughs> you know, it, this is this is actually impossible. Um, look, I know I'm pointing out issues here, and I'm not really providing solutions. Look, if I wanted to go into solutions, that's going to be another video, and it, you know, this one is already 24 minutes long. So, um, I, I I hope to go into solutions at some point, but look, we have the same issues present um, that we do at the other bases so far. Um, let's have a quick look at um, all the one point bases just quickly then uh, so that's the four three pointers and then we've got uh, three one pointers to bring us up to seven 
So let's look at Shrouded Sky. Uh, let's look at Wokuk Watchtower first, I think. This is, if I remember correctly. Yeah. So Wokuk Watch Watchtower. Okay, this one, again, it's the same issues, right? You've just taken the Amp Station. It's a great victory. But now you have to take the Watchtower. You're not going to. Okay. And even, even worse than this, right? The gameplay loop between Wokuk Watchtower and Wokuk Amp Station is now impossible. Um, it's going to be um, lots of time spent outside of the bases and not a lot of time spent inside of it. Right, Wokuk Amp Station, for those who don't know, it's a one point amp station, right? Seven minute time or, or so. Um, very difficult to take. Um, even in formats like Lane Smash, right, which focus on taking bases like this you know very difficult to take two two generators uh for both the main terminal right and then the vehicle gates so very difficult to take now the game direction rel has admitted he wants those larger scale fights especially on osha right and that's the direction he wants to take the game in and that's fine um I, you know, I'm not saying I agree with it. I'm not saying I disagree with it. I'm saying that's fine. You know, it's not an inherently awful decision. However, when we have an implementation of a game mode like this, where, you know, it, this is impossible without overpop, we have to remember how that is going to affect both sides. Because, yeah, we could have massive overpop, and we've got, you know, five out of six... Sorry, one uh, one capture to go, and then all of a sudden, you know, there could be a platoon drops here, um, kills the flag carrier, resets the repo, and, and and just undoes the work of a 96 plus. That is not uh, beyond uh, reasonable thinking. That is seriously a very logical thing to do, um, and you know. You have arguments of, oh, you know, it's more, they're more organised, therefore they should have that advantage, which is true. Teamwork helps bridges bridges a skill gap. It also helps um, deal with other um, issues such as, uh, you know, being outpopped because skill in of itself is a force multiplier. That's kind of how you have to think about it. However, right, what we have to realise is that in the older version of this base, where the point, it was a singular point, it was inside this triple stack here, um, it was already quite difficult to take. Again, because of the um, the main point, right, which I keep bringing up, which is the time from spawn to the point. Okay? Doesn't take very long, right? Really doesn't. Let's say I'm a defender in the old version of this base, and I spawn in. Right, and for some weird reason, I ran out here, and I'm like, okay, you know, nothing's going on, nothing's going on. Okay, we've kind of, uh, okay, awesome, we've pushed them back to the building. Okay, great. Um, I'm gonna do what you know, perhaps not everyone will do. I'll go on the roof, and then, okay, I kill one light assault. Great, you know, uh, I've got people on the tower providing me support because this is a large population fight, 48 to 96. So. Um, okay, one more light assault. Maybe I don't get the kill. Maybe I do. If I don't, I'll be back here in seconds, right, on a respawn. Uh, on here, I can cut off infantry rotation points. Again, not a concept you need to worry yourselves about. But essentially, um, you know, hop down here on a flank, right. I can be, I don't have to be a light assault for it. I can be a center shield heavy assault uh, with a suppressed weapon. Um, and if it's a Gorsaw, right, I, I'm killing lots of people if it's a orion i'm still killing a, a, a good amount of people you know i'm i'm taking five people with me um if i do a max crash as a squad lead on the same route i just showed you i'm securing the, the building nine times out of ten so already it was a very difficult base to take with ctf i would i would argue um it's pretty impossible okay um, let's look at Shrouded Skyway. Uh, we'll, we'll fly over to, to South Westgate in a second. Um, but again, I, d I don't want to make an hours long video on this. But I do want to demonstrate just how um, how difficult this game mode is going to be to get right. Um, and actually the current flaws. 
um, in it. Now, Shadow Skyway, in my opinion, is the best CTF base on Amrish. Okay, we eliminate to an extent vehicles and air, although anyone who's played Lane Smash on this map uh, map will, will will tell you that it's very uh, you know air, air to groundable. It's just on live, uh, you know, people would just seem seem to get a bit afraid of it almost. Um, but essentially, right, we have our attackers, sorry, our defenders coming in here, uh, multiple pathways. Okay. Uh, that, that was meant to show the grav lift. Sorry, I didn't do a very good job there, did I? Uh, the grav lift there. Okay. Uh, and then we have our... I've got the colours the wrong way around this time. but uh, So we start off... Our, um, our attackers can actually start off at the repo. And then they can... Kind of do this. Right. And then in terms of Sunderers, we have one at Squad Way. We can have one at Diamonds Way. But actually, we can also have one at Spades. Um... And so, really, the the only two I would, the the, the two of importance I would say are squad waypoint and spades, um, and I'm pretty sure most people would agree with me, even if the attackers are coming from the north. Um, now, again, you need population to defend your logistics, um, and you also need population to get onto the bridges, um, to a point where you've just got enough to where you don't get wiped out. So you're probably looking at being able to take this base if you're an attacker. Um, you could probably take this base, and this is the only CTF base on Amrish where I would say this is, you know, a likelihood um, with uh, with under pop, right? You could get this with 45% pop, maybe 40%, um, and you know, if you're, um, you know, really good and you know what you're doing and you're using force multipliers, you're using teamwork, uh, and and you have that ad inherent advantage in the skill, then you might even be able to get a 30-70. Um, but anything below a 3070 is probably, you know, starting to be, become a bit of a dream at that point. So this is actually one of the better bases. Because the time to the flag is a little bit longer for the defenders. Okay, not not that long. It's not, and it's a little bit um, shorter for the attackers. Okay. It's protected from vehicles and air. So we minus two, ve or, or pretty much... Right, so we minus two variables. Right, so now we need less population, um, and also, right, um, the Sunderers which we can place uh, are much better. So actually, you know, people will spawn in, uh, and the fight will be around uh, the flag rather than the conduit, um, because in all in all these other uh, bases that we've kind of talked about, right, the def the, the defenders have a massive advantage in, in defending. Um, more so than what they should have, okay? Because yes, defend defenders ha should have an inherent advantage in defending a base, right? Um, because they're the defenders, it makes sense, right? And that's just how it works, right? I don't think anyone has a problem with that. But what we do have a problem with, or at least I have a problem with, is when the defenders have so much of an advantage that actually you need to you know just you have to zerg or not not even zerg but you have to over pop a base right so this i like this right we remove two of the variables we need a little bit less pop it's a bit of a closer fight right um and for anyone who who wants to complain that we're kind of removing a little bit of combined arms it's still possible at this base right we can still be uh, driving Sunderers up here, Harassers up here. We can still be at uh, a grounding. It's just a bit more difficult to do so, right? Uh, and that is the important thing, is that the vulnerable infantry, it turns it into a bit more of an, an equal domain, um, which then e helps to uh, level the playing field between attacker and defender. Okay, so Shrouded Skyway, I'm not you know, totally happy with, but it's definitely the best of the bunch, in my opinion. So again, we'll look at enough enough of Southwest Gate, and then we have time to look at Fossil Overlook very, very, uh, and uh, maybe Spiral Oasis very quickly. Um, I like Spiral Oasis, so I want to talk about that um, specifically as well. Um, so enough of Southwest Gate, right, the point uh, it's a single point base. It used to be in the triple stack here, okay. And now in all these bases that we've talked about, it's um, 
it's basically, except for Charlotte Scarlet, it's enhanced the defender's ability to defend the base. Well, enough, enough for South Westgate was one of those kind of bases. Where, where actually, the opposite is true. Uh, for enough for South Westgate, it actually degraded the attacker's ability uh, to attack uh, effectively and efficiently. Because the point used to be here at Squad Way. Um, and, you know, the defenders had a very long run time, even with the jump pads, um, which are, uh, it's like here and here, I think. Um, that, that, you know, let's go check. Uh, yeah, it is. It's just a one-way jump pad. Um, the defenders had a very long run, uh, and a pocket flash uh, was very useful um, in defending this base. Uh, and you'd have to rely on beacons when defending. So the attackers actually have an advant had a massive advantage at this base. Now, not so much. You have that long run from A point to the triple. Um, here, at least, attackers can use uh, perhaps a taxi service in terms of sunderers or harassers. Uh, they get from A to the uh, repo. Um, I'm not sure if that cancels out the flag if you get in a vehicle. I can't, I can't remember. Apologies. Um, but, you know, you have options, right? The issue is, right, again, you already know what I'm going to talk about. It's the fact that I have to run across an open bloody field with practi practically no cover, right, to, to even get one capture. And I could talk about logistics again and so on and so forth, but in order to save a little bit of time, I won't. You already know the points I'm going to mention. It's the same four points I keep mentioning. Okay. All right. We'll have a quick look at SMA just because I want to mention to talk about two bases, um, Spiral Oasis and uh, the Traverse. I think I said Phosphor a second ago. That was wrong. I meant I meant the Traverse. Um, it's just this video is going to get just even longer <laughs> if we do all. Uh, I think there's eight bases on SMA. If, if memory serves me correct, there's eight bases on SMA with CTF. But we'll, we'll only do two of them. So I want to look at a vehicle base which has this. Okay, um, I could look at the amp stations and such. But again we're going to run out of time. Um, but I mean I guess we can fly over it quickly. So draw an amp station I think. Yeah. Th this one again. Right. Just look how difficult this is going to be to, 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 uh, to, to attack. Right. Let's be honest. We, we all do know that's going to be super difficult. Um, and yeah, on an already small map, that's just that's just going to be painful. Anyway, Spiral Oasis. This CTF I like because no one can be under any illusion that this is an infantry CTF. This is a combined arm CTF. All the bases on Amrish that we talked about Right, our infantry CTF bases where combined arms really hurts the attackers, um, and where we have to consider um, defenders' time to point uh, from the spawn room. Uh, and when I say point, I mean both flag and uh, repo. So, here, right, there, there is no natural spawn, there is no hard spawn, there's only Sunderers and, uh, you know. Uh, construction spawns right so here we eliminate that first factor right which i mentioned about time to uh, from spawn to to, to either the flag um, or the repo and then right not only do we have one repo we have two okay um which i like a lot okay i really do because um, although you've only got one flag, it gives you kind of options on, as to where to hold. And I imagine, right, the reason that, why they did this, right, is because if we look at where these are, are situated, right, it's bet in between, right, the Eastern uh, Empire and, and the Western and the Southwestern Empire, um, which which is a good, it's a good idea, it's a good design, right. Um, and overall, it's a it's a really good use of this base. Okay, it really adds flavour, and um, the only downside to it is that it means that vehicles can't 
capture a point directly. Um, however, uh, infantry against armor at this base will lose most of the time if the armor knows what it's doing. Same if it if there's aircraft, you know. So what that means is instead of vehicle bases being essentially bypassed sometimes by like an infantry squad, which I have done many a time, right? It's actually gonna have to be you. You're gonna have to use armor, uh, air, maybe even construction. Um, and so, in, it, in in my opinion, this is actually a really good use for CTF. I know it degrades the vehicles in terms of their direct application to the point. However, it means we don't just a leapfrog pretty much over this base. And I assume, from what I can work out, that's what the devs want to do. And actually, this, in my opinion, like I say, is a good use for CTF. Um, it's got a good design to it. Yes, there's still the issue for infantry, but that's the point, right? It's not a base meant for infantry. It's a base meant for com for actual combined arms, right? Not just um, combined arms on the outside where uh to, you know where you're basically defending logistics or far or air to ground farming right so big positives there um and that's why i wanted to talk about it however because i'm british we're not going to end on a good note we're going to go to the traverse and we'll quickly discuss the traverse um so the Traverse I wanted to talk about because I mentioned it earlier, playing Ultimate Empire Showdown, uh, Winter Gaming's AFC, um, and essentially, right, all we did was, I saw this was getting back capped, uh, I saw this was getting capped, I wanted to take Freya Amp Station, we dropped on it, we went in through, the, through here, there were a few people, one, I think there was a guy here, right, and then I went up, and there was one guy here, one guy here. Um, and now I've got a squad with me. It's not just me doing all this killing, right? There's a squad with me. We go here, right? We're interacting with the, the repo. Um, and I think we killed a, the flag carrier as well, like somewhere around here, um, with a brick C4 out, out the window. Um, and yeah, super, super powerful. Um, that's it. I don't know. So... Again, right, the f I wanted to re just reiterate my point on that mechanic. It That has to change because we instantly back cap them. And they'd spent five minutes here, if not more, <laughs> trying to trying to get it to, to, cap, to cap the base. Okay, that's all I wanted to talk about. In summary, <laughs> the TLDR of the video is point one right um defenders have a massive advantage in ctf um especially when their uh the spawn to point time is really quick for them and it's really long for the attackers now of course this can be negated by beacons and other small things but we're trying to be we're not. I'm not trying to min-max gameplay here because that's unrealistic. This isn't Jaeger. This isn't you know a community smash where everyone kind of knows roughly what they're doing um, to an extent, right? It's not lane smash. It's live gameplay, right? That's what we're concerned about. So that point number one is very important. That spawn to point for both defenders and attackers. Number two, right? Um, the mechanic of which i've just pointed out of the dropping on the repo uh i think you have to kill the flag carrier but basically dropping on a repo killing the cat, flag carrier instantly defending the base and then going on to back cap them you know that has to be addressed point number three uh needing more population to defend your logistics because of the aforementioned two points right because you need people both at the logistics the conduit and the repo okay while the defenders they only realistically need population at any of those three points right you kill off their logistics you basically 
you know, you're, you're, you're halfway to winning the battle. You secure the repo again, halfway to winning the battle. You secure the conduit again, probably more like a quarter way of securing the base, but still, right, you've basically won. So th those three points, and then of course, lastly, um, you need more population to defend um, from air to ground uh, as well. Okay, and those four points, right, that is why CTF for me is not good. However, at bases such as Spiral, Spiral, Spiral Oasis, right, CTF has a good implementation, in my opinion, and it can be used for some really cool gameplay. But we have to address those four points, which, you know, Spiral o o o Oasis, it does address those uh, points one or two there. Um, and also, right, it... It actually, it actually provides you with, with combined arms, right? And probably those large-scale fights which uh, the game um, development team seemed to be heading in, in that direction. It was a long video. I talked a lot. Thank you um, to anyone who watched it. Um, I really hope this is listened to um, because these are the the problems with it again there's not some solutions right but there's actually enough positives here to where um it can be built upon right the foundations and the idea are good it just needs tweaking right if you want infantry ctf have infantry ctf but you probably need a base like shrouded skyway um or subterranean uh nanite analysis um for where you know CTF is going to be really good and may I just recommend trying CTF in a traditional bio lab um, because I think you know CTF in a traditional bio lab such as Alatum or Rushnu right um, would be really cool okay um, I think it would be a really good addition uh, Bittle may maybe not so much it doesn't see as much accent uh, action Aiken uh, definitely does see a lot of action though, so why why not try out CTF in the bi lab? I I don't understand. For me, that is um, a great opportunity to see how infantry only CTF would work, because you eliminate again those other two factors I mentioned, uh, points three and four. Um, but also, right, please build upon it in the vehicle bases as well a little bit more, right? Spy Oasis is a great example of a, what you know CTF could be used for at Vida, Stillwater, North Point. Add it in. Why not here at Untat Reservoir? I've never had a vehicle fight here. Add it in. Um, Tap Way Station. Add it in. Why not? Experiment with it a little bit because it is a new concept. It is a new tool, and it will work just with some adjustments anyway thank you um i really hope to see more ctf in the future provided it follows what i've just said um but to, to to continue to kind of force it onto bases where it doesn't make sense due to those four points i've mentioned um well it will only risk further alienation of um of players and including myself i'd be really disappointed to see um, you know, CTF at a base like Watson's, for example, right? Um, it just, it wouldn't make sense to me. Or Eli Tower, um, or kind of just any more tower bases. <laughs> but at the very least, let's avoid tower bases for CTF. Anyway, thank you. Um, my TLDR went into 50 minutes. I'm sorry. It's a big topic, and I want to get it right. Thank you, and goodbye.